Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Welcome to the third episode of Disc Only. Welcome one and all to Disc Only, the show where everything's made up, but the points matter so, so much. I'm the keyboard clicker Proton John, and I actually got my line right for once. I'm Tom Fox, and we can't talk about South of the Border anymore. <laughs> I'm Stephen George, and it's uh, every month I'm just trying to remember to go after Tom. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the 8-Bit Drummer, and I'm addicted to Cookie Clicker. Hooray. Uh, before, we get in, before we get into it, you might have noticed we got some new, uh, new alerts actually going off on the top there. We made some special disc-only alerts thanks to the wonderful Philip Draco. Uh, any support you guys offer during the podcast actually goes to help uh, cover Dan's costs for putting up with the four of us. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's what it is. It's, it's Dan's penance, really. Or, or dance to Dan, really, Dan either way. Dan has to sit here in silence until we call upon him. <laughs> Dan, Dan is Listening. only allowed to say one word the entire podcast, so we have to pay him so he can actually be okay with this. There you go. <laughs> that's, that's part of his contract. Legit, though, he does so much to be able to make he this just light said happen, thank so. you to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's two words. <laughs> Crap. Oh, he didn't say them out loud. It was just written out in the, in the Discord. <laughs> now he's shit. getting a pay He cut. said shit. That's one word. Oh, that's acceptable. <laughs> he'll, he'll he'll come in here and say his one word at some point, and then we'll and and then we'll we'll figure out where to go from there. Maybe it'll be a discussion, uh, a topic discussion. Who knows? No, no one knows. We literally don't know what we're doing. We have no, there's no structure. 
<laughs> there is no structure to this show at all. There is no structure at all. I've been addicted to Dungeons and Dragons, but not like actually playing, just researching everything I need to know for when I inevitably want a Dungeon Master at some point. So what you're saying is you love reading. You're addicted to reading. <laughs> yes. I'm addicted I'm addicted to reading. God, books I, are great. I, I, I've been down that exact road before. I like, have been bef before we ever started playing. I, I was just glued to all of the information and yeah. trying to take it all in. It's it's it, like it's it's so fascinating. Like when it, it when, really when you got when you when you got that itch, like like it, you just reading all that stuff is like man, there's so much to this. Hmm. I've only played one uh, D and D campaign, and uh, that was the one with uh, Massey, uh, Emil, Erica, Adrian, Jules, and oh god, I I I had never played it before. Period, and I had no idea what the frick I was doing, but it was one of the most fun experiences I've had in a long time. Jules is a god tier DM. Anytime Emil is in your your game, you uh, oh, are always in for yep. a ride. Which we'll have fortunate to guess to use this name. time. And okay. every single one of his names is a wrong answer he got in Wheel of Fortune. Mr. Filth was a wrong answer he got in Wheel of Fortune? Yes. Yes, it is. No freaking way. Yep. Same with, uh, same with uh, Feast of Key from, uh, from, Col <laughs> yeah. from Coliseum two years ago. No way. Yeah, what, they've what, all, what was, they've what all been the bad Wheel of Fortune guesses. Uh, was it Calibrary Cuff was the first character he had? Was yeah, that, Calibrary, was yeah, Calibrary. Yeah, Sir Calibrary. Yeah, Calibrary. What Sir appears Calibre. as chaos is actually structure. Yep, <laughs> that, that's really Matt just the, that's just Matt, TRG Matt in Park, general. That's it was. <laughs> is that is Matt, that the was also for good. the runaway guys? <laughs> Pretty much. I've just been applying it to my like my life, and it just kind of oozes out everywhere else at this point. I, I am writing a, a campaign, but I've got to get to, I've gotten to the point where it's like I feel like I needed to draw a map in order to have a visual aid for what I want to present. And probably before then, I might want to run some prefab stuff so that way I know what the hell I'm doing. I I highly highly recommend the uh, the D and D fifth edition starter set. Like, not only is the written material really really good for easing you into it, but also the story is legitimately good. It's a it's like a full forty hour thing. Um, it's not super linear, so if your party goes one way or the, uh, another. There's all sorts of ways that they can go. It's really, really uh, well done, especially for a you, starter set thing. Can I tell you a secret between the four of us, Dan, and our and our many, many listeners? Okay, it's not <laughs> a very secret so at that point, but go for it. I've, I, I've already spent eight hundred dollars on all the books on D and D Beyond. <laughs> oh, nice. Well, I mean, that just means you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait until you start buying the uh, the the miniatures uh, booster packs. No, no, I've seen those. Uh, we, Don and I went to uh, to uh, Barnes and Noble uh, recently, and uh, I saw those there. And I'm like, nope, nope. I'm keeping this. I'm trying to gotta try and keep this all digital if I can. <laughs> there's definitely there's advantages to both, and I, I think both are valid. Yeah. Hmm. I like how you're well, ashamed of like, spending. Or, I like you're ashamed of spending like 800 bucks on D and D stuff, and I just look behind me and I'm just like, that must be quaint. Look, <laughs> I mean, like I, you know, I'm I'm getting there. I'm I'm getting there at some point because I did spend, uh, I did spend a good amount of, of of money on on video games as well. So I'm I'm approaching. I'm, I'm, I'm while I'm miles behind. I'm I'm slowly approaching your level, and when I say slowly, I mean at a snail's pace. I was gonna say, don't, <laughs> don't. <laughs> As a collector, and Steven's laughing is telling me I'm right about this. Uh, uh, don't. <laughs> I, John, Mal, and I just took on on Sunday night. We took I think oh God, I think it took about almost five hours to reorganize all of the Wii games. And like finally box up the GameCube stuff because there's no other there's there's no more room. And when we did all of the Wii stuff, we left the perfect amount of gaps for the games that we don't have. Mm -hmm. So now, as we get the stuff we need, we can slide it into the gaps. And it took five hours. See, that's smart. But, 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 uh, but I'm at a, I've got a problem. Like so, yes, or the past weekend actually, I did this on the weekend. I had to realphabetize all my Game Boy Advance games because I had a bunch I didn't have sorted. I have 825 Game Boy Advance games. 
They released that many Game Boy Advance games? There's oh, yeah. over a thousand of them. I think it's like 1,200. <laughs> oh, yeah. Game, Game, Boy, Game Boy Advance had a lot of shovelware. No, no. Yeah. No, I was joking. Like, I knew that there was a lot, but my God, the fact that you have a higher number than 50% of them, John, is kind of crazy. I, I'm trying to complete it, and it turns out I don't think there's a complete list out there of all the Game Boy Advance games because every list I look at is missing a couple hundred. That's... A hundred? I, I, I think... I think one of the weird things about game collecting is that people just assume that there's like a definitive list somewhere, but no, people have to put those together. It's mm -hmm. actually astoundingly difficult to find actual complete lists that have every uh, title for any particular system. Bro, where's the Google Doc? And well, that's like, it. Like, yeah, there's and, so and many there's Google like, Docs, but they're all missing stuff. Yeah, there, yeah. There, there's like there's a few like full comprehensive lists out there. Like I'm pretty sure the Wikipedia article on N64 games has all of them. Not including like ones that were made within like the past like five years or something, like because like Forty Winks came out recently. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like, you know, I, I was like, oh, I'll just do this for the Wii U title. Nope, it lists all the download games too, and they don't, and it doesn't distinguish which ones are physical and which ones are digital, oh, or man. what country they're from either, in case they were region locked. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. like, whenever it came down to like the N64, there really wasn't that much shovelware that i that i'm aware of i know there's probably a little bit but like com no, that, comparatively it's also, it's also an extremely small library yeah, yeah it's, it's it's like 300 games just under seven games yeah. oh the okay. n64 yeah dang but like Which, at least at least like what 60 of that is sports games oh yeah there's a ton of sports games that's insane it's, it's, like, yeah, I, I remember I remember picking up a couple of games which i thought were going to be decent for the game boy advance and i was just like oh Oh my God! Like, <laughs> how did this yeah. even get past QA? Oh. It's like it didn't. It slipped through the cracks. And oh, there's so much shovelware. There's yeah. So North much. America, North America has 50 unique games that I guarantee 90 percent of those are sports games. Yeah. Oh, wow. Probably. And pretty much mm -hmm. every system has just a pile of Maddens on it. Oh yeah, <laughs> a pile of Maddens, a pile Not of NBA's, a pile of MLB's. Oh man. When we were sorting the games, like uh, me and Mal took turns. One person would be on the games, and the other person would be at the computer reading from the spreadsheet. And like when we got to the M's, we just started <laughs> swearing. <laughs> it's like Madden, Madden again, Madden again, Madden again, and don't even get me started on the S's. God, there's so many titles for the Wii that start with S. You don't got to worry about that on uh, on when once you get to Wii U because there was only one Madden game for the Wii U. Really? <laughs> they, yep. they gave up. <laughs> they, uh, EA was like, yeah, we want to produce games that have better graphics than what the Wii U can put out. And Nintendo isn't a good marketplace for doing microtransactions, so we're giving up on the Wii U. Yeah, but I mean, then they I... did stuff like only put out Mass Effect 3 on the system. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can believe it. Wii U's physical library for North American titles is 168. It is I'm five away. Ex exceptionally small. You're five away? Yeah. Oh my God! Congrats, that's and impressive, I'm, uh, amazing. And I'm, I'm getting that. Uh, that what was the what was the one that Shake like down Hawaii? Was, Shake down, down Hawaii, Hawaii. Yeah, my I just got my order confirmation for that one. Dang, cool. Yeah, I ordered that also. Um, but I <laughs> legally required to. <laughs> <laughs> I, as I said, uh, probably in the last episode, I'm always completely blown away by y'all's dedication to that man. Like I am, the only thing that I collect is like plushies like that's about it and i don't even have that many like, i mean I really, that's that's so yeah. much better because you can like actually hug that <laughs> like like don't hug you a pile of video games like child wait you that... don't hug your, your nintendo 64 john like come on man no like i like i could hug a bookshelf but then it would fall on me <laughs> it's 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 cold and hard and angular i mean what I, I i really like game collecting um for the for the the sense that Every time you look at an individual disc on a shelf, it takes up a very small amount of room, although that's debatable once you get into the thousands. <laughs> but it takes up a very small amount of room, but every disc represents an entire experience. True. And I love that. Like, there's an entire world living inside that little case. And that individual game, every specific game, has ties to somebody's memories from childhood. And I love that about video games. Absolutely. And the only the only game I can really hug is the baby doll for babysitting mama. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Don't shake the baby. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I, was, oh, I, was play, I was playing babysitting mama and I had to sit it down on the washing machine and then I lost the game. 
Oops. I, I didn't mean to dry a brick. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, dude. Oh. That's oh, that's man. not an option in the game, by the way. Just a heads up. That, <laughs> that will not in fact win you the game. Speaking of uh well, let's change that subject. Speaking <laughs> of plushies, uh <laughs> I um dude, the uh Build a Bear just released uh the Vaporeon like uh because it has like an eevee and a jolteon i believe i don't know which other ones they have Ooh, there's a jolteon Ooh. yeah there is a jolteon uh you better <laughs> yeah um i remember For that limited that time only by drum Jumney. um but um but yeah dude it's actually super nice like i i switched him out with the other plushie that i had on stream and now like snows back to being like my main mascot or whatever um dude they are such nice quality but if y'all haven't heard them y'all need to go and check out the sound effects that it makes because it's the most ridiculous sound effects I've ever heard in a, in a build a bear, a build a bear like doll. There's like, he says Vaporeon, but it goes on for like six, seven, maybe 10 seconds. So it's like, Vaporeon! It, it, is it like it's charging up an attack? So it's like, Dude, Vaporeon! I don't know what they were freaking thinking. I have no idea. Like y'all need to actually like go and look this up. Like it's kind of funny that they let that walk out with that but um well but yeah is, is it one of the ones that you can still record your own voice into uh you can technically do that at a store but i ordered it so it came with oh. like the uh it came with the uh the six awesome action phrases that you get you know <laughs> <laughs> so you can re you can record your voice into the pokemon uh i don't know if they'd let you do it with the pokemon ones but i know that you can do it with any other build a bear i don't see why they wouldn't be able to do it so if if they ever came out with a quagsire plushie like you yeah, know was, i was about to say yo yeah. build a bear pokemon company reach out man all, all we need to hear is uh, he needs to he needs to squeeze the paw and it just goes oh that'd be freaking perfect but it has to be so loud that it actually moves the plush <laughs> away like it just like repels it across the room that would, that would be a very loud plush <laughs> oh man also they need to make one that has like that that has the mouth wide open <laughs> yeah perfect Dude, like, I, I, I see people in chat spamming my new Tom Silence emote where it's the exact <laughs> same emote as the screaming quagsire, just with the mouth closed. <laughs> it's a really, really good emote. It is really good. <laughs> the other the other day Tom raided and raided with that emote. <laughs> and it was just a ton of them with the mouths closed and then finally Tom posted one with the mouth open and then people started posting it with the mouth open it's like they were just waiting, <laughs> I have waiting to shout on my mark on my mark that's what it felt like it felt it, like you it, were like a it was general. a choir you got you Dude. got surrounded by a choir <laughs> that that is a brilliant brilliant raid message like to be able to do that like, like that that emote is so uh versatile in that case because like <laughs> everybody's waiting you do one and then everybody just oh at the same time that is freaking brilliant i had a bunch of uh i had a bunch of new emotes made another one that people are posting on there is the the magic carp one the canna man one with the can of <laughs> yeah, I, uh, uh, a uh, a staple weapon when I play Hitman has become the can. So we play a game called Can of Man. Oh, okay. Oh my God, that oh the magic RP mode yeah. is so cursed. <laughs> oh my yeah, God. Yeah, well, it's, it, it's because it's like off in the distance. Can you hear it? Carp. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody find that fish. I'm pretty sure. Carp. Carp. <laughs> in a million years, I would have never guessed that that was magic carp. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not exactly sure what I saw. It seemed kind of lewd, and I was just like, I don't know what that is. Just, just move on. Magikarp's pretty pleasure. damn lewd. Let's be real. I am now going to pleasure myself with this fish. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, well if you do it that way, then yes, it's very lewd. Do we have to put the explicit tag on this podcast for iTunes? <laughs> it's on my this channel. Technically, we were already moment. there. Oh, yeah. true. This moment. This is your fault. My fault. Oh, God. No, no, no. Uh, Tom's fault. Okay. Yes, I agree. For, for unleashing that bitch <laughs> onto the world. Christ let's let's somebody. let's just blame Tom. I do, I agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just like high school. Oh, no. <laughs> were you were you commonly blamed for making things lewd? <laughs> Was that <laughs> did that happen more than once? Let's. We're, we're, I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> I, I was going to say, like, that's a long pause there. Hmm. 
<laughs> See, y- y- hey, I speaking don't know. of that, can we talk about can we, like can we talk about uh the the uh Pokemon hashtag that came out? Oh. Pokemon Masters EX. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pokemon, Pokemon Masters Master EX. No way. <laughs> Pokemon Master Sex. Real, real hashtag. Real hashtag straight from Pokemon. Dude, I was told about that on stream today. They were like, "Yo, did you hear about the Pokemon hashtag?" I'm like, "No, I had no idea." I- <laughs> I want to do the very best. Oh my (laughs) god! I feel here's the thing. That was I get the feeling that was a boardroom decision, and it was just like just hashtag Pokemon Masters EX. Like nobody's gonna give a shit. And then like it's trending, and they're like, oh good, it's trending. Oh no, it's trending, dude. That that right there is the most like. I mean, it's a darn good thing for it to like take off with. Like it wouldn't have taken off harder if it wasn't that right. (laughs) Good choice words. any publicity is good publicity question mark, you know, like that type of thing. Cause it's like, yeah. Oh, Pokemon masters. EX, Oh, whatever. Pokemon master sex, bro. That's going to take off like freaking <laughs> hotcakes. Like, Oh my God, it just works. <laughs> it just works. And I'm just getting reports that Nintendo has, or Pokemon uh, rather has fired their, uh, their social media representative. <laughs> oh my God. That's Aster- like a- 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 asterisk. That's, that's a joke. Like that, that hasn't happened yet. Like and that, right? Being rehired so, someone by definitely got company. fired. <laughs> yeah, someone got yeah. fired at least. That right there is like the uh, the the hashtag. The chat just reminded me of it. The the Wiggler Wednesday mishap oh, from a yeah. while ago. Oh, where they missed they missed the L. Uh huh. That <laughs> it was like, whoa, Toad's been <laughs> Toad's been having too much fun or something like, like that. Whoa, like, okay. how they came back to it. That crap was so funny to me because it's like it's such a wholesome mistake right like it, like nobody meant to do that but you you know somebody probably lost their job over that dude it's so bad oh man it's proofreading nuts. yes <laughs> yeah proofreading it is a hard hard job to yep. apparently pay I've, people for i have made so many grammar and spelling mistakes i skip over words when i type like my, like i just get ahead in what i'm trying to say and i'll just like completely skip over words so i'll post a tweet and it's like uh, f- favorite game do good and it's like oh no bro i don't even want to talk about spelling mistakes that has become my freaking brand recently and i hate it actually i love it but for, <laughs> for example the tweet that i put out today while i was on cast uh, we had a poll. Who's a bigger meme lord, me or Jules? Jules won by one vote. Um, it was fifty oh, fifty. Yeah. Oh, you saw it, did you? Because yeah. for one thing, I didn't actually tag Jules in it. Secondly, I used the wrong form of one. It's just like <laughs> how how you, how you, bad. You used the wrong form of one immediately before the other form of one. Uh huh. I know that. <laughs> I know that, Tom. Thank you very much for reminding me of my. Oh no, I'm saying it for the I'm saying it for the audience's sake, who might not have seen the tweet. One, oh. five, one, or didn't hear him three two, seconds five, earlier, <laughs> dude. And like, and what's funny is like, I was like, "Yo, I'm batting a freaking million right now for all of my screw ups." And then Jules responds with, "Oh, in his own home field too," because it was on my chat, and I was, oh my god, <laughs> I am so glad that I married a PR expert. Like Erica used to actually work in video game PR, so. I get her to proofread all my tweets and my emails, but not today because I was on stream. So yeah, that's a, <laughs> that one's gonna live in infamy. Womp 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 womp. I think I think everyone makes uh, grammatical errors, like the ones that Tom was describing, where you've just you've straight up missed a word because you're it's a it's just a, a stream of consciousness. Yeah, just thinking too far ahead. Is, yeah. See, Normal people make spelling errors. I live spelling errors. That is literally my <laughs> life. It's ridiculous. Now, for the most part, I, I feel somewhat certain in saying this. I don't usually make spelling errors. Spelling was like my. Oh, my that's a mistake. That's a mistake to say out loud. <laughs> I know. I know. Pricked. And now everybody's going to be looking. I can for guarantee oh, I one, one of your next five tweets is going to have a glaring spelling error in it. Oh, I know. I know. They're, they're but I'm, I'm willing you know. to put myself out there because that was like the thing that I was good at in high school. <laughs> I, I I couldn't do math once they started introducing letters to math. That was it out. I was like, nah, I'm good. But <laughs> spelling, spelling, I could do. 
Pride cometh before the fall, there, eh, Stephen? Mm, oh bit. yeah. Oh, I'm I'm doomed now, but I'm willing to <laughs> I'm willing to ad, at least say it ahead of time. Well, you don't got to worry about spelling because everyone in chat is reminding you of your pronunciation errors. <laughs> yeah, that's separate. He, that's something he's different. He's got a, he's got a writing words, not saying them. I can't I can't say that T word, but I, I sure as hell can spell it. <laughs> you got better at saying it. You did, yeah, and it, and it just and it and it just took hundreds of people berating you about it. <laughs> Sometimes that's just I don't what it know takes, what it is man. about that word. People were sending me tongue twisters, and I didn't have any problems with them. But I can't say that one word. Wait, try what? it now. Just try it now. Yeah, try it now, because I want to hear how you say it. Thermodynamic. Therm. Therm <laughs> oh. Therm oh God. I was about to say this is a judge-free zone, Jared. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me just. <clears throat> Thermodynamics. There you Beautiful. go. There you go. Thermodyna okay. Thermodynamics. Thermodynamics. So, all right. So I have one that's just like that. There is a word um, for an additive in uh, in lip balm called analgesic. And it took me so freaking long to learn how to say that word. Uh, and I've been, I've been made fun of for over a year for that one. So don't and, even worry about it. And what? how did you pronounce it? Anal Jesus. I called it anal guessing because I had no ah. idea what the frick it was. And people were like, that's not how you say that. I'm like, frick y'all. I say how I want. And then my wife called me. It's like, that is not how you say that. I'm like, oh, dang it. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll pronounce. Chat can say it however, how it can say whatever they want to you. But if, if your wife says something, <laughs> there you go. Well, gospel. The, the funny thing was, <laughs> yeah, it was she was watching and she was watching me struggle. And so she calls me up and doesn't even say anything. I'm like, hello. She goes, analgesic and i'm like thank you like this is just <laughs> what happens on stream sometimes is she'll just she'll call me and just do exactly what needs to happen and it's so freaking perfect oh. i've uh i'll sometimes pronounce words wrong on purpose for comedic effect and then i'll forget how to actually pronounce them <laughs> i can't think of any examples off the top of my head right now but like I've been saying like one example of of, of at least like saying a word wrong for comedic effect is like i've been calling the Bible, the Bible, which I know is also a, an Aqua Teen reference. Yeah, but like, I, I don't think I'm gonna forget how to say the Bible. <laughs> the Bible. Mm, you better be careful. Be very careful. <laughs> I have a tail. One of the next five times you say the word Bible, you will get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> is this a chain email? <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is just when, one bad chain email. Now you know the truth. When I oh. when I was in when I was in high school. I jokingly started calling sausage sausage, and it was a joke. I was like, huh, sausage," and I kept oh. doing it. And then eventually, I just that's what I said for the word sausage, and it culminated in me ordering a uh, sausage egg and cheese biscuit, and some and the person being like, "I'm sorry," and then me like breaking down and being like, "Oh my god, no! I've become what I hate." <laughs> <laughs> you, you you've become a man with a Chicago accent, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some of that sausage. Holy yeah. sausage. Dude, I have a I have a really funny story about that type of thing too. Your your brain assimilates these things in it's such a weird way at times. Like even just hearing stuff. I used to have an alert on my channel. Uh if y'all have ever watched Tom and Jerry from a while ago, the uh, uh Uncle Peco singing Crambone, like, oh that dude, la, 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 oh, yeah. like that. I love so, that. So he has a stutter and he's like g -g 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 Crambo like that, right? After having that as an alert for about six months, or even less than that, maybe three months, I started stuttering. <laughs> developed a stutter. I developed a freaking stutter, Tom, and it was horrible. And I'm like, I got to change this alert. I legit cannot have this as an alert. Like, I bring it back every now and then for the fun of it. Like, I'll go and play the song because I freaking love that moment in Tom and Jerry. But it legit gave me a freaking stutter. It's so weird how the brain works, man. Jesus. Donna just reminded yeah. me that that uh while we're while we're like cutesy talking to Ridley, we often mispronounce chicken as chimkin. Chimkin. Chimkin, yes. <laughs> I like that. I had a I had a lady um at the youth group that I went to used to call a refrigerator a frigid air. And I loved that. That was great. Cause she's like, she was like straight up uh upper southern, like South Carolinian. So like she had like that hardcore accent. It was freaking hilarious to me. Like yeah, water, I've, like watermelon, wash your hands, like all that stuff, man. It was great. Yeah, I've, I've heard Frigidaire also, but I mean, I'm also it, South Carolinian, so it, I guess yeah. it's not. Apparently it's a brand. It's a, brand of kitchen it's a brand. Yeah. 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 It is. Yeah. It's yeah, like it's, calling it's, like a bandage a band aid. 
Yeah. But it, doesn't, it didn't matter. A, a, a tissue, a Kleenex. Yep. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey uh, companies, sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Give us <laughs> money. Today's or, episode brought to you by Xerox. <laughs> Insert brand name here, just yeah. all of them. <laughs> Xerox? <laughs> Xerox. Or Xerox. Sorry, I was like, wait, what the frick is Xerox? I heard Xerox like? too. I'm like, what is that? Is that like, okay. is that well, well, people are going to hear Jeff plenty clear in the, uh, in the audio podcast because we record these separately. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm going to ask Dan to actually just corrupt your audio and just play it back. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, rare, rare. Oh my goodness, man. I said, arf, nif, 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 nif. <laughs> nice. Dude, that's one of my favorite gags is like acting like you're saying something backwards. Yeah. Like, like whenever you screw up something, like, yo, how you doing today? I'm freaking, that's good. I'm good. How you doing today? Like, you do that, you just like freaking back it up for a second. I love doing that, man. That's one of my favorite things. So good. One of my favorite things I've started doing lately is anytime I get in a conversation with someone on Discord, I'll just like every, and sometimes. <laughs> like that that is ro- that, that is, is rude that as mean. frick that is why mean. would you why would you do this <laughs> <laughs> it wow. actually happened last why? night on stream i think it was too there's just i tried i kept doing that and they're just like i think discord's cutting out I'm like no I'm, I'm doing that on purpose <laughs> i mean that that seems like a good way to get out of a meeting yeah now oh my god i i, 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 I would like taken. to I, I would like to apply a volume warning to something that I do to my uh to to like especially my viewers on Twitch, uh whenever like whatever things oh, no. are going a little bit too smoothly, where occasionally just in the middle of speed. <laughs> oh that, my god, that used to be just, so I'll, much I'll louder. Apply, I'll just apply that effect, and people think that their computers have crashed. Dude, my buddy, uh, my buddy Scoot used to do that. Oh my god, it, he used to. Use it in like music covers too. It was really funny. <laughs> this is like a live action version of the weird stuff that happens in Eternal Darkness. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. Oh, uh, sorry, guys. The podcast corrupted. <laughs> someone keeps turning the contrast and volume down on the podcast. Dude, what? I, hate I hate it when someone lowers the contrast of my podcast. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the thing it? with Eternal Darkness. Like, it's all CRT effects. It's like, oh no, the tint. <laughs> the background is blue now. Really, you're listening on iPhone on a modern console. Good lord! If you're listening, like, if you're on iPhone, yeah, I'm sorry. If if you're like on iPhone, it's like, yo, you're starting to do the update for for like an Apple update instead while you're listening to the podcast. Yeah, like it's just all those types of different things. Man, any like like any game that would implement like things like that would be would would end up being dated eventually like eternal darkness just wouldn't wouldn't work on a on a on like a, a normal tv nowadays no it wouldn't uh, metal gear solid does the same thing too it changes channels during one of the boss fights uh, oh dude imagine like a uh, uh, a remake of eternal darkness but like with like upgraded everything just freaking imagine oh. that for a minute oh they tried to do that they tried to oh do they that. did oh, yeah. i didn't know that uh they tried to kickstart it it didn't make enough money uh oh, because sucks. the company lost a lot of money in a lawsuit to epic yeah oh, so really? nice. yeah so mm. uh i think not ken levine that's the bioshock guy uh i forget who actually ran <clears throat> the company that did eternal darkness but apparently he was not a nice person and made a lot of mistakes dennis ah, dyack okay. there you go it's dennis dyack yeah, he mm-hmm. he pissed off a lot of people and did it too many times, basically. So that's why Silicon Knights got shut down. Uh, a bunch of the games they made on the, on the 360 and PS3 era, they had to get returned to them and destroyed. Oh wow! What? Wow. No, it's like, oh, no, uh, no, Dan. This is not an allegedly. This is actually like this is a this is a lawsuit that has actually happened, and these these games it, are destroyed. It's like it's like public uh, knowledge or yeah. whatever. I think. Yeah, because I I was working at a video game store at the time when this happened. I actually had to mail back all the copies of Two Human, X Men, Destiny, and I think there might have been a third game in there. But those were the two I remember for sure that they we had to send back. We legally could not sell anymore, and they had wow. to be destroyed. But you can still find them in pretty much any like retro game shop for like five bucks because they're not expensive because they <laughs> sold a fair amount before that all happened. Jesus, that's so, yeah. nutty. That's why there was never a two human two. That's why uh, it's a, it's sort of hard to have found two human one after a while. Stuff like that. Huh. Daggone. The more you know. 
<laughs> Video game history here at the Disc Only Podcast. This is the joys <laughs> of being someone who's attached to video games too much to their life. Manage a video game store, collect video games. I'm like a librarian at this point. <laughs> well, give it time. You'll you'll have art of you as a sexual librarian, John. You know that. I, you know what? I was not going to say it. I was <laughs> not going to say it. I don't. I do oh, not dear. know if there's any sexy librarian art of me yet. There will be, obviously, by tomorrow. Now, thanks to you. <laughs> or, or uh, you know what? Why? You, you, I mean, you're not giving them enough credit. It'll be by the end of the stream. I'm uh, giving them time. You have to do high quality, <laughs> sexy librarian John art. My God. Oh my. You can't goodness, rush man. such a powerful <laughs> concept. <laughs> Could someone just slap together stick? Sexy our librarian John. <laughs> that, that was actually going to be the first picture that got shown, no matter what. I can guarantee. <laughs> Dude, I'm I'm always blown away by like the amount of creativity in both your community and in your commissioning skill. Like the stuff that you <laughs> have like commissioned for that has been <laughs> crazy awesome, man. I freaking I love the creativity, man. I love it. I'm uh, I'm, I'm more surprised by the speed. The speed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. that depends. Uh, each artist has its has their own speed for how they do things. Yeah. But sometimes yeah. They'll, sometimes like they'll get them out so quickly. Like it, it's it's insane. I, I, I love it. Like certain some of the artists in the community, I'll just be like, uh, how long did it take you to do that? It's like, oh, no, this is just like a sketch. And it doesn't look like a sketch. It looks completed. It's like full line work and everything. It's like, yeah, this is just a regular sketch. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I, I remember like, in the, uh, it was, I think it was in the span of like, um of uh, Throne Controllers, like Jumney started and finished a drawing, like a full drawing. Well, yeah, no, because yeah, we were like the last contestant for Throne Controllers uh, PAX West came up. It was our buddy, Mr. Scoot. And in the middle of it, he literally asked for people to draw me as a sexy cat girl. <laughs> and uh, then we do a meet and greet afterwards and Jumni, a regular artist for our community uh, was there and they were like here I drew this because of Scoot and then uh, one of my mods too Smash Tunes also like here I also did this so like a bunch of people just started showing me like cat cat John cat girl John pictures and it's like Guys, like which, the, you, you can relax. Where'd you even get paper and a pen from? Why were you carrying those around? Like we're artists. Which, by, which, by the way, like even, and also, even though Mr. Scoot was the last contestant, he was up there for like a very long time, and I think he said it fairly early on. But even so, that was still a very short amount of time between the last contestant and that meet and greet. Yeah, I want you to know, John, that um, I had had things drawn of me of like uh, my my uh, my community. My community has given me different like personas and stuff like that, which is adorable. Like I have I have like a bunny one and I have a uh, a wolf one or whatever. But before I ended up like guesting on your stream for the first time, <laughs> I had never had somebody draw me as a woman, nor a woman Vaporeon with. Yeah, like it's like <laughs> never, never before. You never can say before. it. It's big tits. It's yeah, big, big tits. Old, you can say big, big mahonga donkaroos. Like it's it's like fitting. <laughs> I've never the had that happen before. Donkaroos. You heard me, Stephen. But like, it's just so funny to me. And like, God, the creativity, dude. Like, it's so crazy. I just don't even understand like how people like. I've actually I've taken up sketching and stuff myself. I'm trying to learn. Um, like, uh, what is it called? It's um confidence in your in your in your strokes and i'll tell you what man all my stuff looks like chicken scratch it's insane but like i'm always blown away by that man i love it but yeah first time ever was on your stream so thank you for that i think i actually just found that picture too i was going to go find the the uh the picture that jumney drew from pax because they they put it up on twitter but then since you were talking about this this is the <laughs> picture in question that jared is talking about let me switch one of those. So there you go. That, that, I think uh, yeah, that is the it. first one. Yeah, that's the first one. <laughs> yeah, that was the first one. And I was like, freak it. Now you have to get that uh, Jolteon plushie. You know you have to. <laughs> like, absolutely. I, a fan, years ago, a fan did make me like a Jolteon plush. It's it's on uh -huh. my uh, one of my bookshelves here somewhere. It's got like uh, a Waluigi hat on. And I think it's got a little scarf too. It was super cute. Yeah. Oh, man. I freaking love it, dude. And it's so fun. It's just such a fun thing. Like, people, like, some people are like, oh, my God, that's so weird. That's so different. I'm just like, man, that's freaking awesome. Are you kidding me? Uh oh. It's, it's just cool. I think uh -oh. I opened up the forbidden uh, the forbidden program that makes oh, me go shit. through second puberty. Second puberty. Oh, no. Second puberty happened when we had, like, the, the, girl, <laughs> the girl Pokemon pictures up, so we know how it, that would trigger that now for Tom. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I, I, got, I, I have to stop recording in order to fix this, so I'll, 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 start, I'll start it up in a second, and I'll, we'll do an end sync. Here, so, what, it, what, we can, what, what we can do is we can all just lower our voice to his voice, and everybody, <laughs> nobody then, will know. Then you just I'll, turn the pitch up like this, and it's great. <laughs> well, it, 
<laughs> here's the problem, and, and it's going to get worse by the second. While it's recording, it slows down the recording. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, so it's going to get desynced the longer I do this. So I got to I gotta back out now and, and fix this. So I'll be right back. Tom right? is literally falling into a black hole. Literally, I, right now. I think, I think the, the fun guys. thing is right before we started... Tom showed up, and the first thing he said was, second puberty? And we were like, no, you good. But then I was like, man, I want to do a bumper of that. I want to do a bumper <laughs> of Tom busting into rooms and, and going, second puberty? In a deep voice. I think that'd be worthwhile. <laughs> second puberty? Oh, I, God. I like how his second puberty is him getting deeper and deeper, and ours apparently is just turning into Pokemon girls. So we've all come full <laughs> circle on this. Oh, I, man. I also like how we're, we're already than the other. I like we're already writing bumpers for Coliseum Four. Like we're just we're There's holding so it many point. ideas, and and also you know that it's a reflection of the fact that we're all sad that we couldn't get together this year. That's Absolutely. true. We had just... so many ideas written down, and we never got. Oh to my work exactly. on any of these Yeah. Things. Here I found so... it. This was the uh, this was the cat girl uh, picture that Jumney drew in just sitting in the audience of Throne Controllers at like the very end That's of the show. Sticking it. To... It looks like a uh, uh, Shantae one too. Yeah, it's like Shantae. Shantae so, yeah, but yeah. It, this is a this is a cleaner line version. Like this was the the one that they did before. And then Good lord, man! Later. Insane. I I will say this: this is definitely not how I saw like my online persona ever turning out <laughs> at this oh. point. Dude, okay, so funny story. I um I follow a lot of artists on uh, on Twitter, yeah. and. Sometimes, like, your stuff will get brought up in those artist circles, and they're like, wait, Proton John? Like, that Proton John? Like, what the frick? You know, like, they, they're freaking out because they're like, wait, move faster, pokey Proton John? They're like, yeah. And it's like a picture of uh, of you. Like, dude, that, that one of you with the dragon, that freaking made me laugh so hard, man. Oh, oh my, my God. God. The Hydra, the Hydra John picture was the funniest thing because everyone's reaction to it was just like what the fuck is this and then everyone who Absolutely. watches the streams on the regular is like yeah no this seems pretty normal actually <laughs> oh man that crap was so funny to me i'm just like oh man because like it, whenever whenever it's somebody who doesn't come to this community and uh is not a part of like the whole trg coliseum group and it's like an outside like artist area they're just like what Jo proton john like they, they lose their minds over it and i love that so much john i, I have a question yeah um w when do you do you have like a general <laughs> timeline of when when the boobs happened oh yeah, yeah uh which time which timeline <laughs> which time because there's three technically why are there three boob timelines john <laughs> how am i now because my life is that complicated steven and you sound good okay good cool <laughs> Hey, you're just you're just back in time for John to explain the first of three boob timelines. I had my I had my headphones plugged in, so so we're good. It, this is uh, is this going to be like a regular segment between John moving and John's boob timelines? We're going to have like his <laughs> history of Proton John. I, I guess if there's a correlation. Let's find out. <laughs> I mean, we we can't talk about uh, south of the border anymore. So this is a better segue. Yeah, for th sure. This is the the pop culture thing we're gonna do now. My my <laughs> random <laughs> art drawing thing. I can't tell. I can't Are tell, you man. Sure? <laughs> this is just not, this is this is not illegal, at least. I mean, like <laughs> as far as we know. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's gonna be like a Pepe Silvia situation where we're just in a room with like a bunch of red string connecting everything and saying that there's there's no John working in this office. <laughs> oh man, I love that skit so much, man. Pepe Silvia. Have you have y'all seen the uh the, the video of the guy playing drums along to the yeah. Pepe Silvia skit? Oh, it's so good. Dude, I love that crap, man. I can't keep up with that. Like I've tried on stream and I'm just like, this guy's a freaking madman. Uh, I gotta look up his name, so like, I, I want to give him an actual shout out because Frick, also, he's good. He he did another one too for uh, for steamed hams. Yes, he did. He did steamed hams. He's done uh, Ansemi Eyes Johnson. He's done uh, just random Boomhauer quotes, which is freaking hilarious. Too. That's incredible. It's, oh my god, I love it. Is it David Dockery? Yes, David Dockery. Absolutely fantastic YouTuber. You guys go check him out. He's <laughs> I love his stuff, man. I think it's David Dockery. Yeah. So anyway, back to the boob timelines. <laughs> Thought I got away from a second. Thought I got away from it for a second. <laughs> All right. So there's three timelines for this. There's literally like three. Uh, each time a different girl version of me was created. And then eventually they just, they just started becoming a regular thing. 
the first this is one the best start to a video game I've ever heard. But continue. <laughs> <laughs> the first one was uh, twenty. It might have actually still been twenty eleven, twenty eleven or twenty twelve. Uh, it was when the Runaway Guys started. So uh, because we were called the Runaway Guys, everyone was like, "Oh, is there going to be another group called the Runaway Girls?" So a bunch of people started gender bending us. So they kept drawing us as girls. And of course, I'm just like, this is great. I'm going to encourage it. Like, because I love encouraging people for art. So they kept drawing it more and more. And then my girlfriend at the time and a bunch of our local friends were all like, yeah, we're going to draw John as a girl now. And I was like, what? Why? They go, because everyone else is doing it. So it just became this regular thing. Uh, I have, I can see it now. It's across the room here. I have a framed picture of uh, girl me drawn back in like 2011, 2012 that one of my friends drew. And my girlfriend at the time was a manager in a framing shop. So she framed it and hid it behind my university diploma. So I found it in my home office when we were still living together. Oh my she, God. She was just like, go in your office, see what's in there. I'm like, what is it? Oh my God. <laughs> it is It is girl me sitting just in brawn panties holding an Xbox 360 controller saying, really? Bring it. And Dude, uh, beautiful. yeah, that got known as Electron Gen. So that's what the that's the first gender bent timeline. I'm learning <laughs> so much about you, John. <laughs> I know it makes so much sense. This was back when I lived with cosplayers, so like they were everywhere. Like we, they were, everyone was always working on costumes and stuff like that. So they were also trying to get me to cosplay back then. I was just like, no, no, I don't, don't. And I pretty much stopped cosplaying around that time, anyways. Uh, the second timeline is uh, October, yeah, September and October of 2018. Because that was when uh, the Super Crown got introduced into New Super Mario U oh, Deluxe, yeah. and Bowsette uh -huh. became more a thing. Recent than I thought it would. Yeah, no, okay. there there was like yeah. a big stretch of just like you know nothing, uh, and then uh, <laughs> what? What? I didn't have boobs for years. I know it was a tragic story. <laughs> Then I gained all that weight. And, uh. <laughs> then they came back. It was great. Uh, <laughs> oh, my so, God. So, uh, yeah, everyone was drawing Bowsette back then. And uh, Arizona drew TRG members uh, wearing the crown. So, like, we, the princess versions of us because we were doing Mario Party 7 at that point, I think it was. Six or seven. Hmm. And, uh, of course, me being me, I'm just like, yeah, I'm encouraged. Like, here, what would happen if we put two super crowns on at once? What would happen if we put on three, four, five, and just kept, I kept uh, egging them to add more and more. So eventually they added like eight and then like it, they made it look like it was like a galaxy explosion. And then they decided like, all right, for all the month of October, my Inktober prompt is going to be uh, girl, princess girl, John in different cosplay outfits. So that was what they did for the whole month. It was just like girl me in all these pictures. And like, I was like on my honeymoon at that point. Like I was visiting a meal for TRG. I was just like laughing. I was having a great time with it, just retweeting and stuff. And then at the end of the month, they introduced the fact that it wasn't actually me the entire time. It was a, uh, putting on all the crowns caused an explosion and created a second me, which was known as Pon Pon, who was a female succubus. So I have a succubus that lives with me now, named Pon Pon, standing for Princess John, Princess John. And uh, yeah, and so that was who was wearing all the costumes that entire time, apparently. So that's what started the second timeline. And so then the third. Boom, boom. Yeah, I know the third. The third yeah. the is third, the, the third one the most well known. Yeah, and the most recent too. Uh, February 2019. Uh, well, okay, this has to go back a little bit. Uh, the TRG stream we did around the time the Pon Pon sequence was happening, uh, we played Super Mario Party on the Switch, and I mentioned that I liked Rosalina a lot. Like, I said, like, oh, if, if Waluigi was not an option, I'd be playing as Rosalina. She's one of my favorite Nintendo characters. So, uh, Ari and a bunch of other artists would draw Rosalina pictures every now and then, and I was practicing for a Smash Brothers tournament in February, and I got real salty. So, Ari drew a Rosalina picture to try to make me feel better during the stream and then uh jumney who had drawn maybe two pictures for the stream at that point they had just started doing stream art uh drew a picture of me in rosalina's dress uh reese in mario's outfit and she was holding bagel and i had like uh, there was like an indentation so he was like oh i have breasts apparently so jokingly as a throwaway joke i was just like nah man if i i know me if i was a girl i'd have bigger boobs than that because like i'm just like whatever it's just a throwaway joke not a big deal and Famous Jumney took it as a challenge. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
it was taken as a very, very big challenge. And thus the running gag of bigger very much became a thing till uh, <laughs> it, it came to a point where she became like her own character. And then I encouraged other artists to just make their own versions of uh, alt Johns. So there's just a whole alternate universe of alt Johns now. We have a wiki because it got to that point where there was just too many. <laughs> Hang on. They're, you they're, know you made it when you got a wiki. <laughs> I know. They're like Seriously, they're, the, the Johniverse wiki, this is a real thing. Uh, a bunch of the users here in, in, the, in our art discord and everything actually run this. Uh, it posts all the different alts they get introduced. It, it does little things for the artists and just like who are the most popular ones, like different versions of John, etc. Uh, let me see here. Well, how many Alt John articles are there? 452. Insane. Jesus. <laughs> and if That's I like... had if I had to guess the ratio or like the percentage wise ratio for uh, girl Johns versus guy Johns, this is probably about 85% to 15%. There's wow. about 85 of them. The trending pages on the Alt John category: Rosa John, Pon Pon, myself. Hydra John, John Tay, which is a combination with Shantae and myself, John Real, which is a combination of myself with Toriel from Undertale, Android Rosa John, which I don't think has been drawn in a while. Actually, no, that was somewhat recent too. And Ska John, which is just me and a Ska band. <laughs> so like like I said, like it, it, it's just there's a there's a big skewing there, really. Dude, I freaking the internet is awesome. Like, internet. I'd, like to, it, I'd like to welcome anybody who happens to find this podcast on iTunes and is using this as their first introductory episode. <laughs> welcome. Yeah. Welcome to a normal day in my life. Mm -hmm. I love that um, because of uh, that stream with you, I ended up getting a uh, a different version of myself named Jamie Rose, which is basically me, but Amy Rose, a size. I don't even know yeah. how to say that. Um, but I, I like that my community has more so uh, embraced the the furry side instead of like the uh, the rule sixty three side. Mm. So uh, one of you say you had something um, on your desk or whatever, uh, like a picture. I actually have a picture. Well, I actually went and got a bunch of pictures uh, framed and stuff of art that um, people have made for Eric for basically for our birthday for Erica's birthday. It was a birthday gift and just a bunch of different pieces of fan art that's been done. But one of my favorites is a picture that was done for mine and Erica's anniversary. It has it has me as like as like my little wolf Sona, and then it has her as like her little fox Sona that people have made up. And I am proposing to her um, in the place Aww, where I proposed so her. And I'm like, that is the sweetest freaking thing. Aww. So it's actually it's hanging above my uh, my desk right now, like right on the wall. So it's just, it's freaking like people, people will say like, oh, that's weird. It's like, no, that's freaking wholesome. And I don't give a dang what anybody thinks. <laughs> you know, I, I think the thing is that people don't realize like we, uh, we kind of don't care how we're drawn. We just love the yeah. fact that you're willing to draw something for us, period. So oh, yeah. that's what, that's why I always encourage like, cause a lot of people would say like, I can't draw like male bodies. So I, was, I was like, okay, just draw me as a girl. I don't care. Mm hmm. And like, like I, and I have, I have every single picture that has ever been done fan art wise saved on my computer, uh, technically in Dropbox, but I need to figure out a way to actually put it online so that I can have like, uh, a gallery. I know that you have like the Baru or whatnot, but I want something yeah. that's a little bit more controllable. Um, but I just, yeah, I can't figure that out. Like that's, that's like my next step is like, I want to make a website with a gallery and things of that nature. So yeah, that's actually not that much work, honestly, in the long, long run. Oh yeah. So, no, sorry, Steven. So people people draw John with with uh, <clears throat> breasts. Use yeah. that word. Uh, they draw Jared as uh, Pokemon as a furry. Tom, what what do you get drawn as? <laughs> there, there, there's there's no focus. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, let me rephrase the question, Tom. What would you like to be drawn? As? <laughs> Here's your chance. <laughs> yeah, t fucking manifest destiny, dude. This is what you do. I mean, you could you could have boobs. You could be a Pokemon. You could be a Pokemon with boobs. I'm sure there's <laughs> the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit here. God, I mean, tell them, do what you want. Do, do whatever you want. It'll it'll like like I case sera, sera. I'm good with whatever will be will be. Oh my lord! See, I, I, I'm gonna propose something. Give Artists it, give, can do give, with give, it what, 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 
with it, whatever what, what, are you pro- what are you proposing exactly? I, I hope I you're speaking propose... for yourself and not for anybody else here. <laughs> no, I'm proposing it for Tom. <laughs> oh. I oh. I propose Tom gets drawn. This could be an entire little mini series that artists work on for, for you. Tom gets drawn as various appliances. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the idea. Like you know how you know how banjo becomes the washing machine? Same oh thing. <laughs> but it's clearly a Tom Fox washing machine. Then we got the Tom Fox for frigid oh Sorry, Frigidaire. We've also got the Tom Fox microwave. An entire kitchen suite of Tom Fox. I think it would be great. I'd love to see it. Bro, you know you have to draw to- someone has to draw Tom Fox as a lamp. You know it. It dude, it's so good. Oh my god! Oh I'm looking forward god. to it. Don't Steven. disappoint me, internet. I'm excited. <laughs> the worst part is the first thing I did was like I loaded up the the all John wiki. I'm like, I know I've been drawn as appliances. Which ones have I? Done? You know what? Oh my Steven. god, <laughs> Steven, Steven, I'm gonna return the favor. Let's draw Steven as house plants. Oh, oh I love that. We could Jim- we could have like we could have Steven bonsai. We could have <laughs> Steven Japanese peace lily. Steven ficus. <laughs> oh my god. I, I I would love that and I know for sure Mallory would love that. We could be a little we could be a little potted plant pair. It'd be wonderful. Jared, I think we made it like bandits <laughs> draw, on this one. Then then draw the uh the draw malice pottery to, to hold the plants that Steven <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know. If if I'm the plant she's the pottery, that seems a little lewd. But you know, separate <laughs> plants possibly, yeah. Absolutely. John, as you said, yeah, we we got the better end of this deal for yeah, sure. I think so. Thank you, artists, for en- enabling us to be this stupid. <laughs> Good lord! Oh man! Oh my god! I want to see a Stephen cactus. That's what I want to see. I like I like how it's going to turn into. <gasps> live, we, we've devolved. We, we've devolved. We went from human alternatives animal alternatives plant alternatives appliance alternatives. <laughs> yeah we got human animal mineral we hit the whole gambit oh man 20 constellations are next uh, <laughs> i like jared's let's play, idea let's, I would... play, let's play 20 questions is it an animal mineral or vegetable mineral tom fox <laughs> <laughs> my god <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad we do this podcast. Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> I wasn't even gonna bring up the fan art. I specifically like. All right, I'll be good. I won't ever bring up any of it unless someone brings it up. And everyone fucking was just like, "Oh, tonight's the night. They're gonna do it." I'm like, "What are you talking about? Why is it gonna get brought up?" As, I, didn't, as you, I didn't start the fire, but I did add some coal, and that's <laughs> you, fine. You, you, you threw a gas can on it. No, oh, very much. It's very just much. a little gas. <laughs> That's Look, not man, a little I, gas. That was that you that, just parked a tanker on it. That, that that fire was maybe like like a bonfire. Like it was big, but it was still containable. You just threw a gas can on it. It's spread spreading. I am all about archiving history, and I'm I was not curious. saying it's a bad thing. I'm just I'm just, wanna, I'm just saying know. that you caused an explosion. I, I want the, I, I want history <laughs> to know the accuracy of this. That you caused an explosion. Can, can this be a bumper for Coliseum? I, I passed by a fire and I had some gas on me. And what do you do when you pass by a fire with gas? You just do what you stand on. I Did wanted to know. I just a little bit. I just wanted to know the history of one of my friends. That's all this is. I wanted to know. John, tell me about your boobs. I've seen you with boobs for so long. Tell <laughs> you, me about them. You've boobs. sung like, about them. You have them. sung about my boobs. I would I would like to I would like to also state that with that comment of when you walk by a fire with gasoline, what do you do? I'm so glad that you're a content creator, Stephen. Because <laughs> who knows what you'd be doing right now if you had if you had idle hands. <laughs> Whatever keeps me off the street. It's Tom. <laughs> and apparently, walk walk. you'd be getting into thermodynamics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'd have to spell it. I'd have to write it out and then put it up on a sign for folks. Oh my God! They couldn't arrest him because they he couldn't even say the words. Like, oh no, man, they wouldn't know how to say this <laughs> no, if it was actually no, him. He can't, he, he can't be him. Oh, dag nabbit. Uh. <laughs> I like how this all spawned from bumper talk too. Yeah, I know. And the so best, the, the best part is, I think, unfortunately, this I'm gonna have some more fodder for Steven for for next one, because uh, I'm gonna be doing I'm gonna, in October a little bit before Extra Life. I'm gonna try to do a a charity fundraiser for breast cancer awareness, because nice. I figured it makes sense. <laughs> and uh, I was gonna oh set a goal God. like, all right, if 
if we hit like this specific goal, I will promise to cosplay as Rosa John for a day in Coliseum. Dude, I have an idea for you. D okay, so, that's not the answer I was expecting, but I'm curious. <laughs> no, okay, so check this out. All right, so you know, you know those uh, like the VTubers, right? Like, yeah. the, okay, um, why not make it a stretch goal that you actually get like somebody, like you can commission somebody to do like a VR John as Rosa John and do a stream as Rosa John. People have actually pitched that, but I don't know who to talk to about getting that done. Uh, talk to Jules because he's looking around for one as well. Because he has a, a sub goal for that where he's going to do it as well. Uh, okay. so, so he might he might have some information on that. So since we have the kind of like art versions of us now, John is Rosa John and yeah. and Jared is as like Jamie Rose. But now we got to do a stream together where Steven's a ficus and I'm a washing machine as, as like a VTuber, as a VTuber ficus and a VTuber washing machine. So Steven think... never says anything and you just go. No, no, host. we still, we still, we still speak. Like, you know how like it does like the, the, the motion tracking for Steven, you can just have the leaves kind of like in a certain shape and like, and it like just kind of like rustles a little bit. And I for bet. me, the flap on the front of the washer can open and close. Dude, they're anthropomorphized. Like, <laughs> this is perfect. <laughs> I could cosplay as a Swaro. I bet I could do it. <laughs> Swaro. Go for a palm yeah. tree. It's easy. It's like a that's an easy layup right there. Oh, yeah, but man. if you're a Swaro, ain't nobody going to touch you. Man, uh, once again, I believe that me and John made out like bandits in this conversation. And we like, really did in the long run, I feel. <laughs> it's all because of Steven and his stupid gas can. <laughs> See, we were smart. We were just like, yeah, no, here. We're t we're taking control to an extent. Now go crazy. Uh -huh. well, here's the thing. It's good. It, it, but here's the thing. It's gonna. It's gonna end up back at the boobs thing because eventually I'm just gonna turn into robots and Steven's just going to turn into like plant waifus. <laughs> so it's like poison ivy. Together. Steven's turning into poison <laughs> ivy. That's what you're saying. Yeah. To be honest with you, so there's gonna be poison ivy, and I'm going to be a. You're gonna be I'm Jenny going to... XJ9 from was it my life <laughs> I'll as a teenage Jenny robot? From my life as a teenage robot. Yeah. yeah. Dude, yo, Jenny. Jenny was like a, a, a straight up waifu whenever whenever people were younger. Man, my god. Like legit, but no, I would. Oh my god, dude, I would love to see like a Tom Fox XJ9. That would be so, so good. Someone in the chat suggested <laughs> uh, my model number be TF9. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Perfect. Now I we can't... just need to figure out a thing for George or uh, Stephen. Called you George. Sorry, for George. I was yeah, reading. I'm reading. Just calling everybody. We're just calling everyone by their last names. Hello. I, I do have first George. names. I'm sorry. I was looking at your name in freaking Discord and just George popped George. out of my head. It's, it's all lowercase. So I like how that's the part that you locked on to. <laughs> Look, I'm going to call him Stiffinge. Because that's like the <laughs> middle of it. Because it's all freaking put together. <laughs> Stiffinge. Stiffinge.org. Let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's take that idea and let's burn that with the remaining gas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no. Plant waifu was fine, but no, no. Stiffinge.org. Nope. Can't Look, go there. All I'm trying to do is get you a good domain name, Stephen. Okay, that's it. That's all I'm Dude, trying I to have, do. I have the best domain name because right. my, my name ends in ORG and I own it. <laughs> Oh, nice. You do okay. have you do have Steph Stephenge dot org. <laughs> oh, Stephenge dot org. I do. Yeah. Oh, did we lose? Dang it. Oh, we lost one of the funnier ones for me. Damn it. Oh man. We used to have. I think it was like meatsmellers dot com used to redirect to the stream. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. I don't even remember what in the world even led to that. I think a cocom pitched it, and there's like, yeah, no, like meat smellers. It's meatsmellers dot com. Links back to Proton John. I, I think it's gone unless I spelled it wrong. Uh, we I think did we lose Yeet Peach as well? Or was that even us? <laughs> Yeet, Yeet Peach. Peach. <laughs> was that even us? Dan has that what? No, that's Dan's is Yeet Peach, right? Uh, Falconschool.com redirects to us. I'm boring. I just have the hitmedrummer.com. That's it. And one of my is favorite uh, a, a user made this web page. I gotta remember. Is it John owns too many video games? <laughs> yeah, John owns too many video games dot com is is a site with a bunch of like memes from the stream and also attempting to show me trying to beat all my video games and it just it gets the more you look at it the sadder it gets because it's just like oh he's only 6863 away from winning oh, uh, someone, <laughs> someone in the chat reminded me that uh chilled chaos bought the domain tracer as gay.com and it uh, redirects to his youtube channel <laughs> <laughs> nice so many domains 
And oh, apparently, yeah. and apparently, buttsex.info leads to the Ninja Sex Party YouTube page. Oh, nice. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that was a already, good one. I already found Art of Tom as a Lamp. It took no time at all. And Steven is a cactus. And Steven is a cactus. <laughs> there are so many of Steven as a cactus, actually. There's one of me as a Roomba. There we go. Here we go. Oh, this I like from, that. This one's from Show Me to the Exit. Not the brightest. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I love his little goatee. Oh, man. We got to be careful. Though. This might just turn into like a uh, like an art viewing stream. The people in the podcast would be like, well, frick. You know? yeah. yeah, sorry. It's just like, yeah, if you're listening to the audio one, that's what you get for not being here, suckers. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> please, please show me the cactus. I need this. All right, hang on. I'm on it. This one's from Dark Overlord. Uh, this is Steven as a cactus, and Tom is a fan. Steven has his his quills also, make the make the uh, the logo for Steven vlogs. And also, all the settings <laughs> on the fan are ah. <laughs> Now I need to hear I need to hear Tom like scream into a fan. <laughs> scream into oh! a fan. <laughs> Man, uh, <laughs> beautiful. There's also dude, a, I, could oh. be, I, I, could, dude, I could be a toaster and just hide in Steven's house and he'd never know. Oh my god! Uh, this I was is turning say, into a game of prop hunt. I, I, see, I got a bunch of pictures of sexy librarian John, but then, then Magus and, and then, Andrus, everything, then everything evolved. No, then someone dropped a, a Photoshop of Steven on the the sexy flower from uh, Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Oh my god! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> this is certainly not what I uh, what I thought tonight would be. No, th this and is yet, a normal day are. for me. This is a normal day for me. So that but, I had a feeling you know, this would eventually happen. I just figured we had a couple John, more episodes before it happened. I'm I'm weighing tonight and me being a plant versus last month where we talked about stabbings in restaurants and I'm like, <laughs> which one is the true experience? <laughs> I feel that I feel this the is the better experience. But then again, again, I feel like I got the best the best case scenario out of this. <laughs> sure. I'm in second place for sure. Absolutely. I think we're even oh, on this God. one, Jared. I think we're even I'll on be, that. I'll, I'll be I'll like, yeah. I get to be like a Transformers robot at some point. Like it'll evolve. I, I, yeah. I swear it. Eventually you will you will be able to take over the world. So we we may oh, have yeah. chosen poorly. Dude, you've given dude. me all the you give me all the power here. Freaking Tom and Steven are the wonder twins. One of them gets like form of and the other one gets shape <laughs> of. <laughs> form of dehumidifier. <laughs> Shape of common house plant. Shape of grass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have been given a special request to read out loud for the artists listening or watching today. And it is, can someone draw Tom as the brave little toaster? Aw, the brave little Tomster. Oh my God, yes. The, the brave, brave little, little Tomster. Tomster. Jesus. I just envision a world in which common kitchen appliances have your glasses and i love it <laughs> just a giant giant pair of glasses on a refrigerator and i'm like yeah is this gonna influence a sequel to i to the i took a few liberties dream <laughs> honestly who knows man my dreams are wild and I for think... whatever reason they often include you and i'm not sure why <laughs> Not sure what that's about. See, now, but... that's another story. Like, that's a story that I would like to figure out. Like, what the would... fuck is going on with that? For for the sake of the people who don't know it, should we explain the "I took a few liberties" dream? Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can I can explain that pretty quick. Um, okay. I I don't have so I don't have a lot of dreams that I remember, but when I do, they tend to be a little wild. And I had a dream where uh, I was producing Morning Mario every day, and for whatever reason there was a day that I couldn't do it. So in the dream, I asked Tom if he would take over for one day. I was like, can you make an episode of Morning Mario? And he said, yeah, no problem, man. I can do it. And I was like, cool. So then the next day or, or whatever, I get a file on my computer from Tom. And I'm like, oh, cool. Tom did it. And whenever I open it up, it's Tom in snowboarding gear on top of a mountain. And he's explaining snowboarding tips. <laughs> and I'm like... Uh, so I sent Tom a message in the dream. This is all a dream. And I say, Tom, uh, hey, buddy, uh, I, I really appreciate you going out of your way to, uh, to make the Morning Mario episode, but this isn't Morning Mario. And he's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, you didn't 
you didn't even play Mario. You're you're doing like snowboarding. He goes, well, I took a few liberties. And I was like, well, he's like, hey, I took a few liberties. I took a few liberties. That was the entire dream, start to finish. And I woke up and I was like, that is the funniest thing. And ever we... since ever since then, we've wanted to turn it into a real skit. Yeah. It just hasn't happened yet. Oh my god. Huh. The best part is like, you can have like someone. You should have him come in and, and like you you walk in on him. He's still streaming, wearing the snowboarding gear, and just talking about snowboarding tips. And then you're like, "This has nothing to do with with Mario at all." Like, I took a few liberties, and then you're like, "All right, I I leave." And then you agree and you leave. <laughs> and then Tom turns around, and is like, "All right, well, let's get back to this ice climber stage we're playing in Mario Maker, anyways." <laughs> <laughs> well, like, well, here's the thing. Like, t talking about like how we wanted to make that happen. What I went home for uh, to Connecticut for for Christmas in December. You know, a much better skiing location than Texas. I was going to go skiing to uh, to to make this a reality, but it never actually happened. Yeah, and actually, uh, I never told this, but um, we I just recently retold this story not long ago, maybe a week or so ago on on stream, and Emil sent me a message, and he was like. We really have to make this happen. <laughs> like, I really want this thing to happen, and I was like, I want to, I want it to happen too. <laughs> Not that I don't. So I took a I few hope, liberties. I took a few liberties. I hope at some point we get a chance to do it. <laughs> Freaking brilliant! Oh my god! Any, any I'm not bringing any snowboarding gear up with me. I'm I sorry. Gonna, I was gonna say, <laughs> any place to go skiing in uh, in Myrtle Beach in uh, in, uh. Like, <laughs> in, 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 the, in like the spring or summer months. Uh, no, nor any other months. <laughs> we do not have that here. Oh, All right, well, we're gonna, have to, we're gonna have to come up film in a remote location, my house. Yep, get, get you some <laughs> snowboarding gear. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Me, me and uh, Eric are jonesing for a uh, a trip to Canada again, so. Well, once the border opens and <laughs> once y'all allow us like crazy Americans up there again, you know, what, so once, much. once we consider letting anyone else show up here. Yeah. <laughs> so, someone in the chat says you have mini golf, which makes me think that they're suggesting that we shoot the snowboarding skit at a mini golf course. <laughs> That's so much better. I love that. You need, you need I, I, I think truly that would be taking a few liberties. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're get, taking uh, liberties on the liberties. Uh, you're gonna oh, get no, no, hang on. No, I've had a terrible idea. Uh, okay, so we, yes, we, we go to the mini golf course. Tom is still dressed like he's going to snowboard, but he's going to teach how to like get across the green. He's just talking about this, like, and putting in general. And then you get, well, again, you have a few liberties, you walk away, and then he just pulls out of his pocket the little Lego Mario. <laughs> and then he just pulls out a whole course and starts jumping him around on the whole like on the set. It's great. It'll be oh perfect. Oh my lord. Oh, um, I, I don't know if any of you have heard this. I, I think I mentioned it like one time. Um, Roland. I, I had I had thrown around the idea on a stream of doing a uh parody of Supermarket Sweep with our group, but at the <laughs> at Player's Choice for, with video games. Roland was watching at the time, and he was like, "That idea is great. We should do it." <laughs> oh my god! Oh. So Dude. you know, but he's already seen insane. how I shop. There's no way he's the the <laughs> shelves are gonna be intact if I run through. <laughs> I I don't think you could actually get a full size cart in there. Everyone would have to have like little <laughs> baskets, but it could be <laughs> done. Oh man, that sounds like a question or a challenge to me. <laughs> I like that Roland's so gung ho great, about it. I, great, great ad for the uh, for the for players' choice. That's for sure. <laughs> Come to our shop and knock everything over. <laughs> we got the Proton John special. Everything you could put in this bag <laughs> in thirty <laughs> seconds, you got it. It's all yours. It's, I think the best the, the best part about that bumper is I think I still bought more games than what I actually grabbed in that bumper. Oh yeah. Yep. Oh my. Seems God. right. I would see what I would love to do if we had like the budget and the time for it is I would love to replace one of the display cases in there with like the sugar glass and then John just busts. Oh no. The <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> just destroys it. Just, oh, that'd be great. 
as much as you can shove for just elbow into the glass pulling out n64 games <laughs> like it, it like at, like at, i like got sculptor's like cut most, i got sculptor's yeah, cut pulling, pulling, pulling out the most expensive ones and then the next scene there's just like a giant gash on his elbow with a piece of glass sticking out dude i just had like <laughs> i just had the thought of like the person saying like hey you can you can take uh you can get as whatever you can in 30 seconds it's yours and you're like okay <laughs> and just you just like looking directly at the camera and your hand just goes straight through the sugar glass and pulls out whatever's in it <laughs> just looking into the soul of the viewers oh my god you know what so i'm going good. to do viewers <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm take of this. <laughs> i was always so jealous of um when they did like the the kb toy run and the yeah! toy, the Rust toy run and, oh, and i dude. saw because there were kids on there that they they wanted video games so they just went over and they're like well all of the genesis games are mine now yeah and i would watch that and be like that's what i want to do how do i do that those kids were super <laughs> smart too because they Roland's make roll is gonna make our dream come true <laughs> <laughs> i can't wait <laughs> Those kids made out like bandits too, man. The ones that went for the video games, because like, God, they were so expensive back in the day too. Like, yeah. Like, like, like three of those would have been like a full cart of toys for kids. I would love it if like, if it's just like one kid who went to like the Super Nintendo section and they were like, and this is like 1990, like four or five and they're like fully stocked. And like, and it'd be fu- it'd be really funny to look back at an episode of that now and have them like be scooping like five copies of Earthbound into a cart. Oh my god. Oh man. Imagine, dude. Oh man. The worst part is like you guys are talking about how expensive things are and I'm here in Canada where games were like way more expensive as it was. So it's yeah. just like, oh, this is killing me on the inside here. Like how much was Earthbound for you guys? $80. 150. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah. Final Fantasy 3 was 110, 120. And now y'all know why I don't collect video games. (laughs) I was actually, like, whenever I was younger, I was really weird. I didn't buy a lot of games. Most of my games were bought for me by my parents, right? Like, they would, would, like, see a game that they thought that they were good. And this is where the shovelware came in. Um, They would usually, uh, if, like, me and my brother were really good, we both had uh, Game Boy Advances, um, and they would think, like, yo... Uh, we'll, we'll pick you up a game because like you did really good in school for like two weeks. I'm like, okay, cool. So sometimes they would pick up stuff like advance wars, uh, super Mario brothers three or, um, or like the super Mario world or something like mega man battle network. Uh, or then you get a really weird knockoff space invaders or a terrible Dexter's laboratory game, which was unbeatable because of the glitches or something like that. And like, that is why I know a lot about like really crappy games. It's because my parents didn't know any better whenever I was younger. Um, but the, the ratio was really good though. Like they usually had a, like a pretty good amount of sense. What was going to be fun. And every now and then, my dad would be like, "Oh, this will be great," and it wasn't great. It was like it was like the time whenever he brought home Superman sixty four for the oh. super. And, and I mean, of course, John knows all about that. Yes. But my dad loves <clears throat> Superman. Like he is a massive Superman fan. So he got that game and got it home, and he was like, "This is absolute garbage." <laughs> 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 and like, dude, my my dad's uh, gaming prowess goes from Pac Man to Galaga to uh, what what is it? Uh, Mortal Kombat 3 and all the Mortal Kombat games. Like, he loves Mortal Kombat, but he brought home Superman 64 and he was just like, what What in God's name? (laughs) (laughs) My parents gave up on trying to pick out games for me really quickly. Like, Mm. in the NES era, it was fine because I I had River City Ransom, I had Ninja Turtles, I had Kung Fu, I had Fighting Golf. Like, I actually had, like, decent games. Yeah. And then the Super Nintendo era came out and... uh, they actually they grabbed me Mario Kart, which was great, and then uh, Donkey Kong Country came out, and I they're like, all right, what do you want for your like your birthday? It's like, oh, I want Donkey Kong Country. It was birthday or Christmas, I forget which. I think it was my like my eighth or ninth birthday, mm-hmm. and uh, like, okay, no, we can't get these. Like, uh, it it's sold out. Like, we're in a small town. Like, the only places that have games are like Canadian Tire and Walmart, and neither one has Donkey Kong Country. It's like, okay, but I can get you two games for the same price of that Donkey Kong Country. Will that be okay? I'm like, oh, that sounds great. As a kid, I didn't care. And uh, the ki- the games that got me were Arrow the Acrobat and The Lion King, both for Super oh. Nintendo. Both notoriously difficult games. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I can definitely pinpoint that to being the exact moment that my taste in games formed exactly how it is now. 
<laughs> that's the exact moment i'm like oh my fate's been sealed yeah dude like uh super nintendo i had it on lock though man like super nintendo my my dad my mom and dad knew exactly what games were good for that but with the with the uh game boy advance there were so many more that mm. they really didn't like understand that uh but yeah i had i had super mario world i had uh all-star collection for mario i had uh donkey kong one and two dude I finally beat Donkey Kong 2 the other day, uh, well, about a couple months ago, for the first time in my life, because uh, I could never get past the ghost area, like that that ghost level. I can't remember which one of those. It's like the one with the wind and the oh, ghost yeah. rope. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's As another point. I stopped, I stopped playing that game at 16, and it wasn't until I was 29 that I picked it back up again and beat that game. Like, oh, my God. And Erica was there for me. And she was having a great time because King K. Rule fricked me multiple times. <laughs> yeah, if you don't oh know what to do God. in that fight, that would mess you up. When, like, when the controls oh, yeah. get reversed for you, that must have threw you off like crazy. Dude, and the game, I, I remember this, and Erica can vouch for it. The game glitched on the fight to where I hit him, but his health overflowed. For some reason, there was a glitch <laughs> to where his 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 hit bar or his, his health point or however many hits, he reset the fight completely and i was like i just hit you like eight times like why am i in the first like thing of the fight again because it completely glitched out and she can vouch for it 100 percent. it was so funny to her but i was dying because it was like my 15th try oh my god there ain't nothing like a glitch like that man I, you bring up something interesting and i kind of want to ask you guys do you remember like a like specific levels in in games from your childhood that you got stuck in 100 percent. oh yeah 100 percent. absolutely i i yeah, that or like just memorable experiences of like overcoming something and getting to something for the first time and it being mm. really impactful. Yeah, dude, I I got one. I got a, uh, go ahead. <clears throat> Most of mine come from rare games. One of them was Donkey Kong Country Two. I got stuck in the uh, I think it was like the second of the like no, it was the last level of um of the uh, the creepy keep. Yep. Oh, oh Kong yeah. Country so 2. the one where the the toxic yes climb yes, toxic climb. climb yeah 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 toxic climb yeah. That, then, one uh, sucks. That, one, that one's awful. I hate that one so much. Um, and Toxic then, Tower. Okay. Toxic Tower, yes. And then uh, I think it was the control mission in GoldenEye where you had to you had to defend Natalia so she could like so like she could like find something or like or like change the course of like the satellite or something like that. And oh, there that were guards just coming out of the walls, like coming out of like every single entrance and just like gunning her down. And like it was so hard. <laughs> I got stuck in the one of the Arctic levels, uh, like the first or second Arctic level in uh, Goldeneye. It was because but, you got lost because that's that that those levels are huge. Yeah, and it was so foggy you couldn't see anything. But I think my number one hardest moment in a video game ever was Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga: Kakalita Soul Part Two or Kakalita Soul. Whenever you're fighting Kakalita Soul, that fight took me probably 150 times to beat because I was under leveled and I didn't know that whenever I was younger uh, um, that you can just like do that. I suffered through that fight. I was probably like level 20 or 25 or like very, very low, very low level for that. That was infuriating. Like, oh my God, Kakalita Soul is the, like one of the hardest fights I've ever done. I am. Um, <coughs> Steven, you take John, it. John, well, uh, I, I don't really remember anything like particularly difficult um but also my memory is pretty garbage anyway but i remember um two very impactful moments in video gaming for me one is also like tom said it's a donkey kong game uh, donkey kong country one i remember the first time i got to vine valley the third world and like i had been playing the game and i hadn't hit you know because i just went to the third world i hadn't gotten to um the checkpoint uh to a candy save point and uh we had to leave because we were like going to go pick my mom up from work or whatever. And I was like, oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? And dad was like, just, I don't know, just leave it on. And that was, that was two things. For one, it was impactful because I got to Vine Valley. It was also like, it opened my, my, my mind to the idea that I could leave the console on while I wasn't at the house. And that blew oh, my no. mind. I was like, <laughs> what? And then, you know, we went and did our thing and came back. But the, the biggest the biggest gaming moment for me um, was uh, finding out that NES was in Smash 64 because I didn't know. I didn't have the internet at the time, so that hadn't been spoiled to me. It was something I genuinely discovered playing on a Saturday morning. Uh, and I had set the settings just right because you have to have a certain amount of stock. Yep. 
It did a certain amount of stock, certain dif difficulty. Exactly. Yeah. You have to play, I think, a normal with three lives. Yep. And I played through it, and then it was like Challenger approaching. And I was like, Haha, what? And then it was Ness, and like it was a hugely emotionally Im impactful thing for me because Earthbound had been my favorite game for you know however many years at that point, four years, and uh, ever since I first played it. And I remember I was like crying. I was sitting on the bed crying because I was so excited he was in the game. And he kicked he kicked my ass and I died. But then I ran out to <laughs> I ran out to my mom and I was I was I was in tears and I was trying to explain to her, Mom, Ness is in Smash Brothers. Ness from Earthbound's my favorite game. He's in he's in this game. And you know, my mom's like, Oh honey, that's great. I'm so glad. I don't exactly know what's going on, but I'm so happy for you. I was like, It's so great, mom. And then I had to go back and like do it again so I could beat him and finally play as him. It was it was wonderful. It was, it was probably my best gaming moment. That is adorable. See, I I have two moments I can think of with myself. Uh, one is a, like a good like getting revenge, and the other is definitely me. Just it's weird given the context of my life now. Uh, when I used was a kid, I used to go visit my cousin, and we were playing. Uh, he rented this game. Was it Puss in Boots? Carol's Great Adventure for the NES. And it was like this weird, like just platformer. It was just a really strange game to play. Uh, but it, it wasn't that bad. Like I remember playing through it, like it being a little challenging, but I was having fun with it. Then I would get to a boss and the weird boss was like an invisible something, like an invisible, I, all I can remember was like an invisible lion tamer or something like that and a clown and my character dying instantly. Like they walked into the screen and suddenly dead, nothing. I didn't even move, like just dying. I never got a chance to beat that as a kid. And last month, for game clearing, we played that game. And I got through all the stages no problem first time. I was just like, oh, this is way easier than I remember this being. And then I got to that same boss, and I died instantly. I was like, what? <laughs> Wait, what? what is happening here? And it turns out, you don't have any iframes in the game. If you get touched, you just start dying instantly. Like, your health meter <laughs> drains instantaneously. So uh, we actually had to struggle and replay through the game to defeat the what we found out was the final boss of the game. And I didn't know that at the time. Like, especially Kid Me didn't know. So getting revenge on stream was so good. And then our prize for winning was having our main character impaled on the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> so then it was just like, oh, oh, I guess this is victory. And then have, the uh, other... Oh, oh go, go ahead, ahead, go ahead. You go ahead. Oh, I was going to ask if, uh, if y'all have ever had any, like, uh, controller breaking moments like you've actually broken a controller before in video gaming uh yes what was it I'm curious uh, it actually happened on stream really <laughs> pinball of the dead oh my god so that just, sound, that just sounds like a bad time. <laughs> we, we were doing a challenge on uh, Game Sharks which is a, a, a challenge group that we used to do or I is still active I just stepped out of it Mm -hmm. uh, and the challenge was get a high score in Pinball of the Dead. And uh, there's literally just a random event that happens when you launch your ball that will randomly give you like a certain effect. And one of the effects is 30 million points. Just, and that's it. And like the high score you had to beat was like 60 million. Mm -hmm. But playing the game normally uh, did not actually give you enough points. <laughs> usually because the table was set up real bad and it was really hard to do any of them like the actual high scoring uh prompts on it yeah. so it like it was just easier just to reset the game get the bonus and then just hope that you had like you, you found something enough to get the high score and for some reason during practice i kept getting those random events all the time but in a 30 minute time span on stream when we actually had to do the run i couldn't get it to happen and i got frustrated and i threw my controller at my hoodie which was on the ground but i didn't realize what was underneath my hoodie was a a bust of duke nukem so like a stone <laughs> statue of Duke Nukem was underneath my hoodie. The GameCube controller hit it and it actually chipped. So I chipped one of the uh, the shoulder buttons on it. And it's still the GameCube controller I use to this day on streams. But Aww. I never I never found the piece of the controller I broke. I just know that that Duke Nukem statue broke my controller because I got heated. <laughs> and that was why I took a break from from uh, from Game Sharks was because I was like, I don't want to break another controller over, of all things, pinball of Video the Video game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. 
my uh my my one experience with breaking controller not one but two um was sonic heroes rail canyon dark story oh god that level infuriated me because I, I it i i just couldn't beat it i just could not beat it and if anybody has played sonic heroes y'all know that that game is kind of weird at times but my god rail canyon in the dark story is the worst level in any sonic game that i've ever played now i have not played sonic boom rise of lyric or any of the uh, i have played sonic 06 but i've not played sonic boom or anything but my god rail canyon that is the most infuriating level i uh i i'm pretty sure have never been angry enough to throw a controller that must be nice <laughs> yeah i've, I've I've ne- definitely never broken anything, but I don't think I've ever even like thrown a controller or something. I don't think I, I've ever been. I'm pretty chill. I've never. Things are very bad. I've not broken one since then, so I think I'm doing a lot better. Smash Ultimate like one v ones online against randos has made me throw a controller, but I've always had like the the consciousness of mind to throw it at like the couch. <laughs> I oh, I've never I just, I've never broken one that that way, but I have I have thrown controllers uh, because of playing people against people at Smash Ultimate online. I remember uh, uh, my dad one time. Oh, man. D- my, my dad's a literal bodybuilder. Um, and he was playing games against my brother on, I think it was a PS3. I can't remember what game it was. I think he had like, it, it was a Mortal Kombat game. I know that. But my brother, my dad is usually really good at these games. But my brother was tearing him apart. Like, I just, I could not even believe it. And, and, and I was watching. And my dad was like, he was quiet. So you know that he's, angry and after one of the rounds he just he had the ps3 controller in his hand and snapped it in half i'm talking just like he was just like just straight clean break and i was just like duff that's 60 bucks he's like i'm gonna buy you a new one don't even worry about it (laughs) it's like i needed to get that off my out of my system (laughs) i was like okay fine as long as you get me a new one i don't care but dude my dad just snapped that sucker like a twig it was so crazy to watch i if i wasn't so annoyed i would have been i would have been super impressed because like you know controllers aren't cheap man but he was just like i'll buy you a new one I uh, I remember there back before the Smash Brothers scene got super huge here in Calgary. There was a guy running locals out of his house, so everyone would just drive to the dude's house and play melee together. It was like twenty of us in the house, and the dude had an anger issue. Like he mm. always got mad during matches, and during one of his matches, he legitimately threw down his controller into his coffee table, which split the controller in half. Who? So he just shattered this GameCube controller, and he's just like, ah, oh, fuck, well, I guess I'm out of the tournament, and then just stormed off, and it was his own house, so he just stormed into his bedroom. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, at, at a certain point, that that seems like some yikes fact. Like, there's some other yeah, stuff going on. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we stopped going there after that. <laughs> like, like far far be it for me to diagnose anybody's problems. I'm no professional, but like, if you're if you're willing to consistently destroy your own property, like I don't know, maybe maybe look into that a little bit. Kind of, it kind of makes me think of like I'm sure there's been like jokes this a million times, like the people who get like super pissed off and like throw their controllers, and then they open a drawer and there's just 50 controllers in there to replace it. <laughs> It's like a cartoon. It's like uh, it's like SpongeBob. Whenever uh, Squidward has like a thousand alarm clocks. Oh, the alarm the clocks! Yes, that's yeah. what I was thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but yeah, like that's that's something that you definitely grow out of. Uh, well, hopefully you grow hopefully. out of because like yeah. whenever whenever I was a teenager, like I was I was really I had a lot of mood stuff, you know. Like I was like just like every other teenager, but. Uh, once I got older, I definitely grew out of that quick. Like I am so like I get loud. Like that's my thing. I'm super loud whenever I'm like playing a game, especially when I'm losing. But I'm never angry. Angry. If I'm angry, I don't say a word. I'm just like my dad. I don't oh. say a freaking word, and that is not something that, that I like to show people. I, like, <laughs> that's when you know you've I, gone too far. Yeah, I, 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 I'm the same way, Jared. I've done that on stream. Yeah, where, like I can't get past a certain part of a game, and I just get quiet. Yep, and 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 that's the thing, like because Erica can actually tell that too, because uh, I'll be like, oh, no, 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 like the entire time I'm playing the game, but then like there'll be a part, like for instance, uh, the River Rapids in Origami King. 
Oh, uh, no. I hate that segment because you have to get every coin. I was dead silent on one on the last run of that because I was so mad. I just couldn't do it. And I freaking I, I would miss one coin at the very end every single time. But that's the thing. I'm usually like loud as frick and just doing stuff. But man, don't 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 <laughs> just if I'm quiet, just leave me be. <laughs> It, it must be nice when your mad is quiet because uh, mine is very much not that. Mine is <laughs> my, like, uh, I, I blame the fact that my mom is a teacher. So I, I learned like how to like the like, what are you doing kind of tone for like when you're actually mad at someone. So instead of me getting quiet, I my my tone gets sharper and sharper. You can hear it. <laughs> you can just hear it like how fucking dare you right now. Like just like you can hear there's a damn it. There's a distinct tone change you can hear between being mad and like actually mad. Like my play man is like, oh yeah. god damn it, I hate all this. And the, like my action man is you piece of fucking like, but, rah, like just like pure rage, just like dripping yeah. with venom. You I just... didn't, I didn't want to say anything, but Chad ousted me immediately. I first tried those, I, I first tried those river rapids with the coins. I don't ever want to talk yeah, to you again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. People told me about hey, that too. What the frick? How did you get around the daggone, the big old whirly bird in the middle? How the <laughs> frick did you do that? Oh you, my you God. You ride it. You ride it. Well, I know that, but I would always fall in like an idiot. Like I got too close. I'm like, ooh, I gotta, I gotta get really close. Ooh, and no. It always fricked me up. Or I went too far out and I would miss the outside coin. Ah, Tom! <laughs> <laughs> How, bro? Holy frick. Also, I love that chat completely ousted you. Oh, God, yeah. Like, 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 Y'all like, are narcs. Y'all are narcs. I wasn't sure I wasn't wanted to say anything, but then like, but then people were already saying it in chat, and I'm like, do I nip this in the bud? And then like, I tried to, but you had already seen it at that point. Don't tell chat nothing, man. They'll, they'll, <laughs> they'll turn on you for a Twitch prompt, so don't even tell. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh should we uh, should we start wrapping things up? It's it's probably about that time. It it's either that, that or time, talk sadly. more about breakfast stabbing. So we really got. <laughs> do you, how do you have more breakfast stabbing stories? I'm legitimately oh, John. worried. God, oh, John. how do you have more than one? Why did you have one of the <laughs> one, of the, one of the guys? This it just reminds <laughs> me of like oh my god, the drug of Steven is a chia pet. <laughs> I've been doing art block the entire time people have been talking. I just oh, haven't been saying incredible. anything. So for, if you're no, listening to the we'll audio be... podcast, the video podcast will will show you all we'll the art like that everyone. All everything. this art, yeah. yeah. Oh man, but I anyway, was watching the whole time, but that was the best one I've seen. One of the, one of the you're talking about like like having more stories of like tragic stuff happening. One of the guys from Achievement Hunter keeps has like like dozens of stories of him accidentally running over animals. Dozens oh, of stories? Excuse yes. me. <laughs> Tell him to not drive anymore, please. And one y where he yeah. didn't even, one, one where he didn't even hit the animal, but he caused it to to like he was driving on like a thin bridge that a deer was on, and the deer jumped off the bridge. What the <laughs> fuck? Christ, almighty! Like, yeah, oh, okay, Jeff. we definitely should end the podcast now. Yeah, yeah that, that's spot. that's the sign. All right, all right, all right let's, let's start bringing this together. Let's start bringing this together. <laughs> All right, here, here's Dan's breakdown of the podcast. This is what happened this podcast, if you'd like to hear exactly what you missed if you came in late. Uh, new alerts, D&D &D read, bookshelf hug death, Super Saiyan Vaporeon, unfortunate hashtag, doing letters good, thermodynamics and sassage, podcast corruption, maha... <laughs> I can never say this fucking word. Mah Mahaga dunkaroos. <laughs> Mahaga dunkaroos, second puberty... Three timelines, bigger, appliance and plants, took a few liberties. Proton John special, throne controllers. <laughs> John, it sounds like you're reading out possible Jeopardy categories. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, take I'll take bigger it. for 500. Daily double. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take Mahaga Dunkaroos for 600. <laughs> oh my God. I was just about to say that. Frick. Uh. <laughs> what are Bahanga Donga Longs? That is correct. Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Massive bajoinkers. Like, like. I'll take <laughs> Famous <laughs> Kitties for 800. <laughs> That's I'll take... titles, Mr. Connery. <laughs> the only one I can ever remember, though, is I'll take Anal Bum Cover for 500. Anal Bum Trebek. Cover. Yeah. <laughs> that says an album cover, Mr. Connery. 
Penis land. <laughs> All right. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Uh, we do these every month. This is the first Tuesday of every month we always do these. So the next one will be the 6th of October. If you're listening Grand- to this, uh, if you listen to this uh, on like iTunes or Google Play or wherever you get your podcasts and you want to watch the live show, uh, it's uh, every it's the first Tuesday of every month at 9 p.m. Eastern. Yep. Twitch.tv slash Proton John. Uh, we are also on Apple Podcasts. We are on Spotify and we're on Stitcher. You can also grab us there in all those places. As always, special thanks to Popsky for our theme song, Prism Shard for our logo, Paper Pennies for the beautiful art in our intro, and of course our producer, Motion Dan. Uh, Was not used just one word. Yeah, uh, Dan, do you want to use your one word? We're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna see what everyone's up to afterwards. But Dan, here's your chance to use your one word. Mahaga Dunkaroos. <laughs> <laughs> is Mahog- that Mahogany Dunkaroos? Mahogany Dunkaroos. It's like a I never thought he was going to say mahogany. I was waiting for mahogany. <laughs> mahogany? <laughs> oh. Mahogany right. would be more concerning, to be that's honest. Like a, that's, like a, uh, that's like a code name for a wood nymph. It's like, is what that is. Mahogany Dunkaroos. <laughs> Tom, what do you got coming up this next month? Uh, I got Thursday. I'm going to be doing more Persona 5 Royal uh, streams. Um, we're getting we're getting pretty close to the end, and I'm having a blast playing it. So stop on by. Uh, whatever the, or there aren't voice acting cutscenes, uh, I fill in the voices. I try to be as accurate as possible. And sometimes I throw a little bit of my own flair in there, like making uh, a politician into Tora from Xenoblade 2, or making one of the teachers, Hank Hill. Um <laughs> Also, Boy, uh, Custom, Smash is, Custom Smash is back. A uh, new episode just released on my channel last Saturday. Uh, it was Hot Foot Tower, and it include, uh, included John, Steven, and Josh. Uh, so go check that out. New episodes uh, every Saturday until I run out of ideas, which actually has already happened. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so the series is dead now. <laughs> series is done. <laughs> <laughs> so go check that out. YouTube.com slash Tom Fox. Twitch.tv slash Tom Fox. And uh, I post everything on Twitter. Twitter.com slash Tom Fox. Oh my God, um, Jared! So we're oh, you go, Steve. Nope. Jared, Remember, Steven? Steven, 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 he was always talk. He was always talking. Oh, on me. I was doing. I was doing reverse call order. I was doing reverse call order. Oh my God! What are you doing, John? Who goes now? Is it me or is it it's me you, Steven. Go, Steven, Steven! Go for it! For Jesus Christ! There was uh, only one rule. Anyway. Um, <laughs> So Mal and I, uh, Mal and I are still doing Breath of the Wild blind every Friday. If you want to tune into that, that's uh, 8 p.m. Eastern on Twitch.tv slash Stephen George. Although I also highly recommend a stream that we just did. It saved as a highlight where uh, over the course of 10 hours, I took suggestions from Twitch and made an RPG Maker game. Oh, <laughs> so man. If you, if you got 10 hours, um, give it a watch. It's funny. And uh, if you want an, an abridged version, I'm going to have one out on Stephen Plays uh within just a few days so you'll be able to just see the game itself and you'll also be able to play it it's wild it's really wild seems like a good like that seems like a good like background noise that you tune into whenever something like like intense happens or like some, something funny happens and you're like wait what what exactly happened there it like it's, like like, like ten, 10 hours is a long time but that's good like that's good just like sitting around like doing some work kind of kind of kind of content right there it's a wild ride. It certainly is a wild ride. It's called The Secret of the Corral, and yes, it does take place in a Golden Corral. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, that's all you need to know, really. Dude, that sounds amazing. Secret of the Golden Corral? That's so sad, and I hate that story. <laughs> that's the tagline, yes. <laughs> Jerry, what do you uh, got going on? Uh, I thought it was Steven's turn. No, uh, so... <laughs> So, um, uh, regular uh, concert, whatever you want to call them, uh, streams, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, we do the drum stream where I play all suggestions, uh, 4.30 Eastern. Also, we upload a video on YouTube every single day um, of a different either meme or cover or Megalovania remix, whichever one comes first. And um, we're actually, I'm, I'm getting into speed running, but only of meme runs. And I don't know why I've wanted to do this for a while, but I am now. So every now and then on stream, we'll be doing a meme run right now. Uh, next up is actually a hardcore speed run of Cookie Clicker, where I got to get a billion cookies without buying an upgrade. And let me tell you, that's going to be a freaking nightmare. And I'm looking forward to it, which is really weird. I hope uh, you have a but- spare mouse for that. 
Oh yeah, no, trust me. I uh, yeah. Well, the thing is, you, you don't even have to. You don't even have to click that much. It's it's just to get started. Clicking is the main thing. Like later on, you're you're getting so many cookies, it doesn't matter. Wait, so, um, so you but, can't even you can't even get like clickers or grandmas or anything. It's just no, like, no. You you can definitely get grandmas and clickers. You can oh. definitely. It's not the it's not the multiplier upgrades which is in the store. Oh, so, okay. So yeah, like reinforced finger all, and stuff like that. You can't get those. Exactly. Yeah. If it was click a billion times, I'd be like, yeah, go freak yourself. Like, <laughs> I ain't doing that. But yeah, um, just you know, normal fun stuff. We're just memeing about, and having a good time. All right, and uh, I'm actually going to be really busy this month. Uh, tomorrow, uh, this is my channel, obviously, so uh, my normal schedule is Monday, Wednesdays, Saturdays, and sometimes Fridays. Uh, tomorrow is going to be High Risk Fortune Cookie, where we just roll a random game in my game collection, and then we play it. It could be anything, it, and it usually tends to be something ridiculous. <laughs> uh, Fridays are a sometimes stream. I was going to do a possibly like either putting together that Nintendo Lego set or a pinball stream this week, but I end up having a doctor's appointment on Friday. So that is getting rescheduled this week. But this Saturday is going to be a big one because, uh, the voice actor for Wesker DC Douglas is joining us once again to play resident evil five on stream. Nice. So we did, uh, we did that two weeks ago and he's coming back this week again to continue that playthrough. So this Saturday at seven o'clock mountain time, tune in for that. Uh, this don't month forget, from my, uh, oh, you go ahead. Don't, don't forget Friday to, uh, to tune into John's doctor appointment. Please do not tune in my doctor's appointment. That'd be really <laughs> concerning if I was streaming that, uh, <laughs> later on this month, I think we're going to bring back, uh, our tournament. So subs and followers can join in on that as well. We're debating what it's going to be. It's either going to be a Mario maker two tournament or a team based smash brothers tournament. We're going to see which ends up getting more interest. Uh, and then obviously at the beginning of next month, we're going to be doing that uh, breast cancer charity stream. So nice. that's it for me. Uh, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Again, yeah. we'll see you all next time because the next one's going to be Tuesday, October 6th. Woo! Yeah! Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Burp. Disappointment.